Hey, I'm JD, and this is the Lost Signals podcast. This is a special edition of the show. Unfortunately, Lee and Daryl are not able to join me right now, but this is a little time sensitive. If you're watching this episode right now, as of the release of this episode, it is July the 11th, 2023. Tomorrow, we've been talking about this for a while, July the 12th, 2023, All Elite Wrestling is going to be in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and... We're going to be there. Well, Daryl and Lee are going to be there. Not myself, unfortunately. Just couldn't make the trip. But in lieu of that, this is an exclusive interview with Darby Allen and Chris Jericho of All Elite Wrestling right now on the Lost Signals podcast. First of all, welcome to Saskatoon. Is this your first time? Yeah, it is. I've been a lot of places in Canada, but never Saskatoon, but... This is, a, this is a big one. I'm excited. Like, you know, I, I just love exploring new places. Right on. You, like, you've spent, like, a lot of time on the road. Like, this is nothing new to you, but, like, being with AEW, like, it, it clearly gives you an opportunity to see places you wouldn't otherwise visit. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Saskatoon is definitely one because, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if I'd ever have uh, went through to Saskatoon on my own. So, thank you, <laughs> Uh, mini vacation. <laughs> you're 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 not you're not uh, you're not in strange company by saying like Saskatoon is not exactly at the forefront of vacation holidays. But you know, there's one thing I can say is that um, it, there is a unique charm to the town, and uh, I know that uh, come Wednesday night, the place is just going to become unhinged because you AEW, uh, your entire uh, roster is going to just be bringing a show unlike any other to Saskatoon. So because of that, like, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing this and being a part of this. It's, it's been a while now since you've been in AEW. What's it, what's it like? Like, is it feel like home yet? Like you, you've came, you came into this with uh, actually some familiar faces already, right? Yeah, no, it's definitely home. It's home for me. hundred percent. Like, you know, I, I, you know, from day one, I, once I heard AEW get announced as a company, I heard the word uh, creative freedom, and I knew I needed to be there because uh, what you see out there is 100% Darby Allen. I am not acting like anything. I'm not I'm not being told what to do. What you see is what you get, and I love AEW for it. So, yeah, it's home. It's home. I love it so much. So <laughs> I can't say positive stuff about it. Creative freedom uh, is uh... – kind of something that's been like a, a hot topic lately uh, due to a lot of things in the competition. Uh, with that being said, like, as you say, what you see is what you get. Darby Allen is Darby Allen, but you have an opportunity on a regular basis to work with some incredible talent. Like how much of that is thrown your way or suggested and how much of that is from that uh, mischievous brain of yours going forward? Hmm. Repeat it again. Yeah. <laughs> How you were that? I want. I want to. I want to give a good answer for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, uh, creative freedom is something of a hot topic these days, and uh, that's because of you know the appearance of lack of with the competition. But when it comes to you and AEW, when it comes to working with other performers and other programs within AEW, how much of that is? kind of tossed your way as a suggestion and how much of that is from your own mischievous mind well a good example for example is nick wayne you know uh nobody really knew him uh that much like from a national tv audience like no one you know how, how are you supposed to know a 16 year old kid you know what i mean right and then i went up to tony and i said hey i have these ideas and i want to present nick in a way where i make a video package for him so people can get to know him you know, before he wrestles and just not throw him out there as a random guy, but have a backstory. And then, you know, I, I come up with a lot of stuff. Let's just say that I come up with a lot of stuff, but that's the beauty of it. Tony lets me take the ball and run with it because, you know, that's that's all I've ever wanted in life. Not just wrestling, but life is just the opportunity to do something with myself. Mm. So it's cool when uh, you have someone and that's like Tony Khan that has a national television company and is letting you take a ball and run with it you know because that's all you know i have no complaints but yeah a lot of it, a lot of it's from my mind what you see out there i, I gotta yeah <laughs> for, for good or bad it's, it's it's from here so <laughs> fair enough 
so I, I don't know if you've been asked this before, but whose idea was it to team up with Sting? See, that was never my idea. And I don't even know, like, because I wouldn't want to put myself in those shoes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I never wanted to be the guy that says, yo, Tony, I got a great idea. Why don't I become world champion? I was like, no shit, Sherlock. But, like, uh, I didn't want to be the guy like, yeah, I got a good idea. I want a team with Sting. Because, you know, everybody wants a team with Sting on paper. Mm. But uh, to be given the opportunity, like, I don't – it just naturally started happening. And then they saw the uh, chemistry that I had with him. And then they just said, yeah, the, this is the guy. Like, Darby is kind of like the Sting Whisperer in a way. And, you know, I, I had a bunch of meetings with him and flew down to his house in Texas and was rolling around in a ring. And I kind of talked him into getting back in the ring live. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with, we have such a good connection that no one gets to see, uh, you know, behind the scenes and stuff like that. So right. it, it's awesome. But I, I believe at the end of the day, that was probably Tony's idea just because he saw the chemistry with us. Right. Because, like I said, I would never want to put myself in the in the shoes of like, yo, great idea. Why not do a thing? Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, you know what would work really well for me? Set me up with him. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've now been at this for four years in AEW, and um, you were a I, I don't know if it's the proper term, but a, an indie darling. Like you. You, you have your own style. You have that very much caution the wind and no holds barred type uh, physicality to you, which you know got you the rightful, deserved respect and attention on the indie scene. Do you get a lot of people coming to your shows being like, dude, I saw you at such and such at this arena. There was like 30 people there. You're still just as awesome. Do you still get those longtime fans following you to the bigger arenas? Yes, I do. And what the cool thing about it is they come up to me and they're like, you're literally the same guy. And that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like companies can like take someone and mold them and make them what they want. You know, it's like American Idol making rock stars on national TV. Like it's just kind of corny. Right. So like with me, I, I love being authentic to who I am and staying true to who I am. So you get those old time fans that saw you in front of 30 people and then you fast forward and all of a sudden it's like, dude, now you're wrestling in front of thousands of people that like you can't ask. You know what I mean? So it's sick. That's awesome. And what's it like having a, your, uh, your, your move set, your likeness, your attitude in a video game. Congratulations on being included in fight forever. Yeah. The cool thing about it is the skateboard, <laughs> you know, it's like Tony Hawk meets, uh, you know, whatever wrestling. combat <laughs> yeah yeah cool it's, it's cool because like, i know how inspiring that is to people yeah. you know because like, i know back in my shoes like being in second grade playing any wrestling game and just be like oh this is so cool but to know that you will inspire and you know next generations because it goes back to tony hawk like the tony hawk pro skater literally inspired so many people to start skating so if AEW fight forever can inspire people to get in the ring mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that, that's all you can ask for. So that's sick to have a part in inspiring people. I got a couple of questions that uh, I we, we sent out to our listeners and our viewers. And if you wouldn't mind, we can field a couple of these. Uh, these questions are specifically for you. First major championship match in AEW was against Chris Jericho way back in 2019. Uh, was that the moment where you felt like you had made it? Honestly... I felt like I made it when I made my debut against Cody ah. because even though that wasn't national television yet, but just being on that stage and that platform, making the entrance, I looked through all the people. And I'm like, Whoa, like I, I felt like in my mind, I made it, you know what I mean? Right. But that, uh, to be, but fast forward to your question or to the fans question is to be given the opportunity to main event a show week three of a new wrestling company. Like for them to take a chance and for Jericho to take a chance week three, that's, yeah. that's a lot of weeks is, was very like special to me. So that was another feeling of being like, Oh, the company has like faith in me. So it's cool. Well, I would hope so for crying out loud. They seeked you out, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not everybody could be trusted with the main event spot. I'll tell you that this right is now. True. Not a, there's not a lot of people that can be trusted with the main event spot. 
This is this so, is true. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. Like it, kudos to those who like get that opportunity. That's fine, but it's what you do with that opportunity that ultimately makes or breaks the situation. Plenty of times have been people have been pushed to the the absolute front, only to stumble at the very end. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's I knew that night, week three of television against Jericho, I had to hit a home run. That's why like, I pulled out all the <laughs> tricks that I had in this brain and, you know, <laughs> left nothing on the table because I don't, you know what I mean? I don't want someone to see that and be like, ah, oh, Darby wasn't quite ready. I want them to be like, yo, he's ready. So, yeah. Are, do, you, do you still consider yourself a, a fan of the industry? Being, being like cement in the shoes right now, do you still time to time geek out about what you're actually a part of or what you're seeing? See, um, I'm so caught up with trying to, you know, be equals with everybody mm. and be like, yeah, like I, I, we're, we're equals here. So it's kind of, you know, but there is times where there's like moments you say, like, for example, when Sting came back right. and re- first live match at double or nothing, not the uh, cinematic match we had at revolution, but the live match at double or nothing. And to have that moment post match, where you know sting comes up to me and he hugs me and says thank you for everything like that's you know those are things where you're like man this is awesome like this is awesome because if you can't appreciate what you're doing why are you doing it so i i really you know what i mean i i really I, there is moments i i stop and smell the roses and i get really like psyched with that being said i got another follow-up question here from one of my uh listeners here all in 2021 versus cm punk what did you think of being punk's first match back after seven years of being away from the ring speaking of long time returns yeah that was all out yeah. all in heaven, but all out uh, <laughs> that was uh that was a very i remember that day very vividly like it I was a lot of stress a lot of stress because you know like punk coming back and then being his first match, I, I had a feeling it, if it fell apart, it was going to fall on me. Mm. So I, I knew, like, you know, you had, I, I was throwing up that day. I was so nervous that day. And Sting came up to me, and he's like, I know you're not a religious man, but can I uh, say a prayer for you? And I was like, shh. I'm just, like, over the trash can. I'm like, sure, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll They're take- yeah, I'll take anything. Yeah. I'll take anything. <laughs> oh, that that was another moment, you know. I, yeah. I entered first corner, his music plays, and it's like, yo, this is it. The fans are like, yo, this is, you can feel the energy and mm. yeah, it, it was awesome. Yeah. Speaking of music, uh Brandy, uh, who is a fan, uh, as a big fan of punk music, uh any up and coming bands you'd recommend checking out? Up and coming, hmm. I don't know so much about up and coming per se because I'm just, you know, like I know what I'd like to hear more like bands that are like newer, but I listen to so much older stuff. So it's like kind of hard. So I could tell Randy bands I listen to. If that's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's by cool. all means. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So like uh, Crass, um, The Mob, Subhumans, Swing and Utters, like there's a whole laundry list, but a lot of like old UK anarcho punk from like the late seventies, early eighties. So like, you know, there's, there's so much I can go on for days, but uh, yeah, Randy can, uh, if he hasn't already, he could Google or YouTube all those bands and have a listen. Those are some deep cuts too. Like those are the, like the, the like the starting points of a lot of the, uh, of, of the punk movement in the seventies. Like I recognize a couple of those names. Yeah, no, it's I, I I just love all I love all those bands. I I love uh like Crass Records, like when they started their own like label out like and produced all these amazing bands that no one's ever heard of. Mm. I just I, I don't know. I just I was drawn to it as a young young man. Uh, I got another question from uh, Alicia. Uh, first time going through the Canadian prairies. Any cool stories on the road so far, or any observations? For, for 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 Canada. For Canada. <laughs> All right. Well, one time, long time ago, I wrestled in a bull in alley, and um, 
the uh, tr- the guy running the show had no money, so he gave me a gift card to this Italian restaurant, and we had spaghetti as payment, and we drove 13 hours to get there. So, but it it was worth it because the like the view is so nice. Oh yeah, well, that was down in Col- that was down in Kelowna. Oh Kelowna, really? I'm familiar uh, with that, was, that area, was, absolutely. Yeah, good spaghetti houses in Kelowna. <laughs> nice. I, I'm not getting paid by spaghetti. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I got another question. With your caution the wind style, people mention uh, you alongside guys like Jeff Hardy. What was it like to face off against him in Dynamite? Yeah, that was another one where you, you asked me the first question, how much stuff comes from my brain? Right. And we were supposed to have a match, just a normal match. Right. And I... Went up to Tony and said, no way people want to see me and Jeff Hardy trade wrist locks. No way. Get the ladders. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a fun one, you know, because it felt like I was calling a match with myself. Really? You know, normally it's like me trying to, like someone trying to talk me off the ledge. Mm. But then Hardy's like, well, then I'll do this. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like something I'd say. So it was very, it was very cool. It was like you're battling your clone stuff. So. That's awesome. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, Darby. I really do appreciate the time that you've you've given us here. Um, with that being said, the Dynamite in Saskatoon on Wednesday. Looking forward to seeing you there. For anyone who is foolishly unaware of what they're in store for, what would you, like the elevator pitch of uh, what to expect in Saskatoon? Well, besides me and Orange Cassidy, Continue to kick some ass. Right. I was uh, for Saskatoon. It's going to be the debut of a legend, Nick Wayne. So uh, it's you know a wrestling prodigy. Like he, like I said, I've been training with him since he was technically eight years old, mm-hmm. and I gave him a contract at sixteen. Now he's eighteen. He's legally able to wrestle in AEW, and here we are. So I think it's going to be. I, I want it to be like one of those things. You know, when people make their debut, and you you remember, oh, like they made their. I want, you know, this this Wednesday to have that special film, which I know it will, but I want people to remember what city it was, where it happened, and, you know, so it's very, I, I'm really looking forward to that. And, you know, overall, I'm looking forward to the whole show because, like I said, with AEW, it's so random. You never know what you're going to get, so you got to be on your toes at all times, which yeah. makes it exciting for me to watch in the back because <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, homie just fell off the... The scaffold, I'm jealous. But, um. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and you know what? One day that will, I like, that'll be a, a trivia point of that debut happened in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Yes, very much. Awesome. Before you, before I leave, before I let you go, uh, where can people, uh, where do you want people to find you, uh, like, online, social media, if you have any of that? This is your opportunity to just say it out there. Yeah, just Darby Allen <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, like, check it out. You'll see all my shenanigans outside the ring. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Darby. First of all, I want to thank you for taking some time today to speak with myself. And uh, thank you for uh, bringing AEW Dynamite to Saskatoon. This is not your first time in Saskatoon, though. Oh man, I've been going to Saskatoon since I was probably five years old. So, <laughs> but yeah, we're excited to to kind of bring our pro wrestling party to the prairies. Obviously, we had some great shows last week in Edmonton and uh, Regina, and this week we've got Saskatoon and Calgary. So, uh, great pro wrestling areas, and it's going to be a lot of fun for us, and a lot of fun for I think everybody that comes to, to, to hang out with us. Yeah. Is this is it so this is like a jaunt down memory lane for you though because uh like you are well uh renowned for uh being on the uh on the on the road for many different promotions uh both in North America and overseas this like does this like does this bring back like old stories old memories or road trip adventures from your I, past I wouldn't say any time is going down memory lane because it's not like you know I grew up in Saskatoon and had a thousand matches there or anything. But it obviously, it's part of the of the lineage of, of of Jericho. But so is most of Canada, most of the United States, most of the world at this point. So to me, 
rather than memory lane, it's more of like creating new memories for, for all the fans that are coming to see us for, for the first time and kind, kind of um, getting a chance to fly the AEW flag uh, you know, in an area that's always been great for, for wrestling. So it's, it is our first jaunt through that part of the country. So, um, and like I said, it, it, because we, we're only four years old, there's dozens and dozens of cities that we've never been to before. So anytime you can go into a city for the first time, it's always exciting. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun once again for us and, and for, for everybody who comes to check us out, both in uh, both last week in Regina, this week at Saskatoon, you know, later on the week in Calgary, and we've been to Winnipeg earlier in the year, which did a bunch of shows in Toronto. So we're kind of staking our Canadian claim uh, more and more uh, as, as the company grows because Canada is such a great wrestling country. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I want to quickly uh, drag in the fact that uh, yesterday I had the uh, honor and privilege to speak with uh, Darby Allen, who, um, you know, he was a, a, an incredible uh, representative of AEW. He, he really uh, was proud and honored uh, of over the fact that AEW has so much uh, freedom and creative control and the input of the talent as well as the people backstage and Tony Khan is almost on a level playing field. You have been able to uh, reinvent yourself so many different times and create new levels and layers to the legend, the growing living legend of Chris Jericho. Is it a relief for you to be able to have that outlet and uh, to have that support within a company to create something new to who you are and the character you portray? I think definitely um, AW kind of reinvigorated my passion for, for pro wrestling, no doubt about that. Um, I really enjoyed the whole concept of AW when we started because it is different from, from anywhere else. Uh, it's not like I didn't have creative input in WWE or, or New Japan or anywhere else that I, that I worked. So it's not necessarily that. It's just, I think it's a whole, it's almost like a whole revolution when we had our company starting, uh, which was the first kind of true competition for WWE in, you know, 20 years. And I don't think people really understood how important that would be to, to wrestling fans worldwide to have an alternative a viable alternative and a great alternative that's not even really an alternative i mean our our numbers and demos have come out even bigger than than than, than we expected and know even in, in canada i think it's tsn dynamite is the number one most watched pro wrestling show out of any in canada hmm. so it shows that there was people who were looking for something else other than the norm and i think what we provided was like i said more of a party more of a creative element um you know, but which equals more responsibility too. You can't just wait around for somebody to come up with storylines for you. You got to be involved from the ground floor up. So, you know, it, it does kind of add to the job description to where, yeah, I wrestle and I do promos on the shows, but we're also coming up with storylines and having meetings and conversations every week to kind of put together the best possible storylines that we can um, to make sure that the, the, the show every week is as good as it can possibly be. And this is a live TV show, 52 weeks a year. Uh, not to mention Collision, which is 52 weeks a year, and Rampage, which is 52 weeks a year. So there's a lot of programming going on um, within our company in, in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. With on that, like the, with the uh, you know the topic of uh, like basically a tent pole, uh, bringing everything else up uh, from the center, and then you know s supporting each other you are like incredibly talented and incredibly art, uh, artistic as well as creative as uh, not only are you a, a, a world-class professional wrestler uh, uh, sports entertainer in, in your words uh, as well as a a uh, written th three books I believe or am I incorrect on that one five, five. my oh. mistake my goodness I need to catch up um <laughs> Uh, the successful uh, lead for Fozzie, as well as uh, an actor on the small screen and uh, in film, like, is there any project that you are like, you you haven't checked off your bucket list yet because you're just you're everywhere and you seem to just be succeeding at almost anything you put your mind to. 
I, I mean, I think it's more along the lines of uh, I just take things that seem interesting to me when they come across my proverbial desk and go with that. So I don't really have like a list. Oh, I want to do this. Or I want to do that. It's kind of, you know, I wanted to be in a rock and roll band. I made that happen. I wanted to be a pro wrestler. I made that happen. And once you do that, you're kind of, you know, fearless as the things that you want to do and things you want to try. So I think that at this point in time, I just kind of take each project as they come. If it sounds interesting to me and I think it's something that I would enjoy doing, then I'll do it. And that's kind of basically where I stand at this point. Hmm. Was it, did you did you pitch to be in Terrifier 2 or did you uh, have to apply for that role? Um, neither. They offered it to me. Oh, really? Um, it was just something that um, I had a good relationship with those, with Damien, the director, and, and David, Art the Clown, and I really kind of helped build, um, build the name of Terrifier. So when they were talking about Terrifier 2, they, they, they called me and asked me if I wanted to be in it, and I said absolutely, and um, that's kind of how that whole relationship came about. Uh, that's awesome. I, I'll I'll be honest with you. I uh, thanks to my girlfriend, I've only ever actually started watching horror movies over the past year and a half. I'm I'm 44 years old, and I can finally say I'm starting to watch adult right. movies. <laughs> so, but uh, Terrifier is uh, is is something of a different level when it comes to horror and uh, and and jump scares and and the like so i mean congratulations on on being a part of that and um i mean all the all the success in the future with television and film but when you come back to aew and um the dynamite show that is tomorrow um it, it sounds weird but i i figured this would be a best way to kind of give someone an idea an elevator pitch of what it's like to actually be live in the audience as opposed to watching TV? Why should someone be there? Well, it's the same thing as when you go to any sporting event or any rock and roll show. I mean, it's always more exciting when you're there live. Um, you know, and anybody that's seen AW on TV and, and has been to one of our shows know this. It's just more of a fun atmosphere. It's a little bit more freewheeling, and um, I think everyone's having a little bit more fun on screen, uh, in the arenas. Uh, you know, it's a rock and roll show combined with a Shakespearean play, combined with a burlesque show, combined with lights and pyro and fire. And I mean, once again, I don't have to sell the show because people that watch it know and people that know Chris Jericho know that we always have a great time whenever we come to town. And we're going to do the same thing as Saskatoon tomorrow night. It's going to be a blast. Absolutely. Um, what uh, What else like do you have on the go if you uh, would like to take this moment to like just kind of tease or promote something that? Uh, is coming up in the near future. And I, I know there was a massive announcement of AEW being specifically in the UK. If you can uh, elaborate on that further. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's coming up in the future is, is Dynamite tomorrow night in Saskatoon. That's all that anybody in Saskatoon needs to know about. And that's all that anybody who wants to watch TV needs to know about. And right. Rumbley's going to be amazing at the end of August. I mean, almost 70,000 tickets sold. We haven't even announced the name or a match or anything like that. But it just shows the growth, the growth of AEW uh, to where we can put, you know, 70,000 people in a stadium in England without even announcing one match. So I think that all that stuff just points to how how much growing, how, how much AEW is growing and just the excitement and the buzz and, and the fire that's behind the, the brand right now. We continue, we're we're going to continue to build that. Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, again, like I really appreciate uh, the, the time that you've uh, given uh, me to speak with you. Um, is there, like, I, I am, I am actually just kind of dumbfounded at the fact that I am speaking with Chris Jericho at this very moment. So uh, I just, I just want to say, I guess, just thank you, thank you for everything that you do. Your, your books, uh, the three that I've actually had a chance to read. Uh, and clearly, I need to catch up on the other two, uh, as well as the incredible music that you put out with Fozzie and your uh, constant uh, showmanship and your constant drive for being an incredible entertainer is just inspiring. And if you could give any sort of advice to anyone who is maybe struggling or looking for that inspiration, like what do you what would you suggest? Just follow your dreams and never give up, man. Just uh, If you think you can make it happen, go make it happen. That's what I did. So we're excited to see everybody tomorrow in Saskatoon. It's going to be a blast. And uh, come hang with us, man. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today.